welcome back to my channel. Uh, thank you for all the comments. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for the comments and the subscriptions that I receive. Today, uh, I'm going to show you that uh, it's also possible to touch up a stone while it's still in a setting. That means that, uh, like for example, this case is a ring and it has a stone already set in it. And with the you know the normal wearing and normal the normal use of the jewel, uh, slowly slowly after years, depending on the stone, uh, actually you start developing some uh, wearing between the facets, especially at the you know the meeting points of the facets, and so the customer come back to goes back to the jeweler and ask, what can we do about it? It's ugly, so yeah, and then they ask me. I usually I usually um, suggest to pop out the stone because it's the easiest way you can handle it properly plus you can reach every single facet of the stone top and bottom uh, in some cases the the goldsmith or the, the jeweler is scared to pop it out because the clothes or the the way that the stone is set into the ring are too thin so they're scared that once they pop it out, uh, it might be too flimsy to hold the stone into place the next time. So or maybe they have to fix the ring some other way. Like the, in this case, this distance, I have to, I discourage the customer about this kind of work. But you know, at the end, <laughs> what can we do? When they ask you to do things, and you can reach it, you do it. So I will show you how to actually cut or touch up the stone on top of uh, this ring, in spe especially in this case, the ring as I saw it in the pictures, um, it's kind of thin, a very thin shank. So I will consider if just dop it as it is on the facet on top or to reinforce the doping to prevent the bending because it's already, it already looks that it's not so straight anymore probably since a long time so yeah let's go on and I'll show you uh, at least how to hold it onto the machine and I'll also may I'll also show you some considerations about the cutting uh, and we are gonna th go through some facets as we're going to, to fix up the stone all right so follow me and uh, stick around I'll show you how these things are done So let's, ob let's, let's observe first uh, the way that the ring is made. As you can see, it is not straight anymore. You see, that's the, that's the table of the stone and the ring is lying on one side. So uh, we're going to try to keep the, the table as a point of reference for the stone, regardless of what the shank of a ring says. Look how skewed it is. But expect some trouble because you're not going to hold it properly and it's not going to be centered on the top. So it's a tricky job but it can be done with a bit of care. I usually use a big V-dop to get as much as material between the ring and the top in between the... oops. And uh, yeah, uh, when we find out, I don't know, I'll see if I see that um, maybe the shank is a bit too flimsy to hold the stress of a faceting we're gonna reinforce it somehow in where it becomes much more solid and it can stand vibrations and uh, pressure all right As you see here, I got the biggest flat top for the facetron. The the top is still uh, soft with the I mean the wax in the top is still soft. <coughs> Sorry. We're gonna use the flat surface of the table to align the stone. 
more or less in the center. Not have to press too much, otherwise we're going to deform the the ring itself. When I need to align the table to the top, I check for gaps of light between the flat top and the table, so I can align it. That's what we're going to do. And here I can see there is a big one. So while the wax is still soft, I can fix that. Okay, so I succeeded in uh, uh, um, aligning the stone to the top using its table. Now what I'm going to do is just to fill this gap inside here for the V top with the wax. Uh, and then we see, we decide if, uh, I decide if I have to strengthen up uh, this gap here with another maybe piece of wood or something like that or we just keep it like that. Just melt the wax into the into the gap, make it drop in. The ring won't move at all, even if uh, the rest of the wax will 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 soften, because there is friction between the table and the top top. So. Let's try the other side a little bit. So here we have it. That's full. Now there is a big, a nice amount of wax which holds the the shank into place there. Let's get up outside too. So it grabs nicely on the shank. Mm. I feel to actually strengthen up this gap here. We're going to add up something. So I took a chopstick, I split it in a half and I cut out two pieces to put one this side. Show you like this. And the other one the other side. So it's going to be more solid. I think I'm going to glue it with a super glue and reinforce it with some filler. Uh, the wax is cold, so I can actually separate two things here. And we got it can work easier even though. Yes. Alright, so I put a bit of glue. Alright. So, we're going to glue it, like this, and like that. And then, here. Top and now we're going to put some filler in to secure everything all around. So we're going to reinforce the bond with the wax and also reinforce the bond with a super glue. The filling I'm using today, since I finished the one which comes with the <laughs> with the product itself, it's um, sodium bicarbonate, the one that you use to bake cake, cakes. Baking soda and it smells a lot when you put it on but you know work in a ventilated area or keep your breath for a while or oh, buy a mask or something, or just resist.
is in any case worse. I mean, it's better than uh, smoking cigarettes. Okay. Yeah. Beauty of these things like this is that uh, you know, to remove all this stuff that we're putting, we just put it in an acetone and for a few hours and goodbye that's it all right so here we have it now we got the solid bond a solid doping for the ring and we can work on the stone without any problems we just have to always respect it because you know work with respect because i mean the stone is held only by the um, the clothes and actually we're gonna solve that too because yeah a bit of glue is in between now as well so it's gonna be stronger and yeah we can work it I'll show you what are the limits of this kind of work I mean, I'm not gonna show you the way the stones are cut uh, because what I do usually when I refurbish a stone it's I just go straight to the pre-polishing and uh, I try to pass on the single facets, smoothing it up and, um, and then polishing them. So I'm not going to show you how that is done, but I'm going to show you, you have to take care when you reach the limit of the, of the facet towards the gold. You don't want to eat the gold out or whatever the material is there to hold the stone. So I'll just show you detailed uh, way to reach and uh, you know how to stop with to stop and you cannot expect actually in this case to have the stone fully refurbished because there are parts that are covered by the the gold or the only material is that uh, it's holding the stone uh, which cannot be touched otherwise you're gonna just wear off the metal all right so let uh, I'll show you in detail what's going on here what I mean this is a 3000 lap. So what I do is I touch the stone and see where the mark of the 3000 ends. You know, out of experience more or less, you got the, the staff facets on this kind of stones around anything between 17 degrees to 20 degrees, 22 degrees. And then you cheat a lot. Because most of the stones cut in the east are not straight. Ah, I finished the water. That's great. Most of the stones that you buy from the east are not straight. They are not aligned properly with the pavilion. So whenever you refurbish any stone, you better have next to you a pen and a piece of paper to write down which which uh, facets you went on. And uh, you, you're gonna use a lot of uh, the, the cheating, the cheater on the on the on the facet drone or whatever the machine you're using trying to pass back exactly on the facet to take off the scratches. You want to cut always a little bit shallower than, uh, than the, pre the previous facets so that you can overlap a little bit the other facets and uh, take off the, the wearing of the stone at the cross, at the junctions, you know, at the, the meeting points. So we got 19,4 degrees, you got 24. Not necessary to mark down. Once upon the time, I was marking down also the the numbers of a cheater, but I think it's a waste of time because whenever you start polishing, you will find out how to spin the cheat, which direction you have to spin the cheater, and how much. It's a waste of time. I tried at the beginning, and it never matches. So <laughs> it's better to actually just cut, and then uh, yeah, you'll find out when while you polish. Okay, we use the same, if it's possible, the same degrees for all the facets. This one. Now 22, 24, 72, it's a bit less shallow. So I'm going to cut these. This should be a topaz, so they told me and it looks like, yeah, 
we'll see as we polish it. It's already start touching the the setting. It's 22 degrees instead of 19.4. The dopping feels very, very solid. Okay, let me show you. Let me see if I can show it to you nicely. You see, I touched 96, 48, 24, 72, the opposite, and also the 12, 84, I mean 12, 36, 7, um, 12, 36, 60, 84, which are the, the corners ones, uh, but you, as you can see, I don't know if you can see properly, you can see a little bit of wearing here already. There is a little facet on the gold, I don't know if you can see, yeah, there it is. There is a tiny little facet on the gold. And there is another facet somewhere else here, at the corner here. Because when I try to lower this angle, because this is not the correct angle for the stone, it was supposed to be above, be, I mean beyond 35. But if I do, I start grinding the gold. So I got to stop on 25. So that will change a bit the cutting of a stone, I mean the, the, the cut of a stone, but we don't care. This small facet on the metal is going to buff, it's going to be buffed away when uh, the goldsmith, they're going to polish the ring itself. So we're not bothered about it at all. And uh, we go for this two other facet here, it's probably 393 and I don't think we got a space because there is a shank of a ring. We don't have space for this stone, this facet here, the 96, which probably did like around 43 degrees here. So we gotta probably get uh, content with this other two if it's possible. And then we probably buff a bit, a bit, a little bit again the, the, the table. And but that's basically it. So I'll stick around and show you. Let's see if it's possible to do what I say. Because most of it, I mean, to, you know, the, the, for the angles of an actual stone, it's mostly about guessing and, and, until you actually put it on the wheel. Let's give it to maybe a 30 degrees or a 3. Sure, you see. That's the one I'm doing here. This one. So I can gain a bit more because it's, it's a little bit too high compared to the existing facet. So I'm dropping it. Drop again another three degrees and see what happens. Uh, we are too far. It's a two instead of a three, it looks like. Let me see. Yes. Yeah, and now this is a correct angle and the correct the correct index. So we find out that it's a 33 degrees and it's a 2. 2, 24, 22, 26. We try to meet the facet. The facets at least next to the table. We don't really want to be a perfect competition cut, we don't need. We just need to be looking decent again. Okay, so as uh, yeah, we succeeded in doing this other fall. So it means this one, this one, and then our opposite side, the other two here. I want to try to go for the the center one, so we can complete the scissor in this point here like that. Uh, we have to keep in mind the shank, yeah. So the angle must go. Just to be like this maximum, not to touch the, the shank. And I want to try to get rid of some scratches on a corner 
And actually if I grind a bit of metal off I won't even mind that much but the stone is gonna look much better. So let's go for it. So now this is, uh, this is a 96 and a 48. We're gonna go for those first. Let's give it a 40 degrees maybe. Let's see what happens. Mm, too shallow. Let's go a 41, 42. But it looks good. Okay, let me show you. Quickly, quickly. All right, you can see, see now the, the scissors are complete. See that? They, ah, that's it, you can see it now. This is the one that we were after. And we've done it. Okay. So there are some, uh, I would like to touch up these areas here on the corners, if possible. And we try it now. As you can see, there is no damage on the shank because the angle allows it. And yeah, let's go on. Let's try just a little bit on the corners. If it's not possible, we'll just give up, but we try. So, unfortunately, we discovered that I cannot without reshaping the ring. You see, there is metal coming out. If I try to reach those facets, I can't just reach it. That's it. So that's what we could do, have done to this ring in this instance. Um, yeah. So the only thing which is left to do now about this thing is to polish it again, to polish every single facet I made, and I will polish also again the the the, the, cra the, the table. It doesn't have many main chips anymore, so I'll just have to pass it with a polishing and then I'll show you the picture of the ring once it's uh, done without all this crap around it because I'm gonna put it in a bath of acetone for some hours and everything is gonna dissolve and the ring is gonna pop out clean. The major stress to the stone, it's reached during polishing. But as you can see, there's no problem. And the stone is polishes very easily, like normal. The bond between the top and the ring is very solid. The stone is held by the, set, the setting. There's no problem at all. So I'll see you soon as I finish. Okay, the stone is polished. Also the table. Now we're just gonna plunge it in the in the acetone and let it be there for a while. Okay, this is the cleaning acetone I use for the for the stones. Uh, so I'll just remove it. I just remove it from the top with the whole structure. I just melt the wax which was holding it to the top, and that's it. Bye bye for a couple of hours and then I'll show you the results as the pictures. So that's the way I fix uh, set stones on jewels. Of course, if you have earrings, I'll have to figure out another way to do such a thing, especially with the studs. Uh, pendants should be much easier because you just have to glue it straight to the to the top. Uh, that's the way I do. Uh, you can comment. You, you're welcome to leave the comments. Subscribe if you like the channel and like if you like the video. I thank God for all my skills and God bless you. See you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.